Okay, guys, uh, thanks so much uh, for having me. And uh, the name of this talk is called uh, Colorblind, uh, Your Skin is Green. Um, so we have this idea that seeing is uh, believing, uh, perhaps. And one notion about creative people that I'd like to challenge tonight is that creative people are the ones who see things that aren't there. They're the Tim Burtons of the world, uh, the folks that see pixies, that see dragons, that see ghosts. Um, but what I'd like to suggest instead is that creative people and creative thinking uh, might actually help us see things more vividly and more clearly. So I think one thing that <laughs> tends to happen to us uh, as we get older uh, is that our brains kind of become hijacked uh, by everyday uh, routines. And I usually point to around fourth grade or so is that period where we uh, start becoming a little bit more self-conscious about what our friends think and uh, might be a little bit more comfortable uh, just deferring uh, from activity. So every teacher's challenge, I think, sometimes is dealing with uh, students that say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Um, you know, in other words, uh, perhaps not willing uh, to try or too afraid to try. Um, but it seems that we get uh, a particular, um, a particularly strong reaction when it comes to the arts. Uh, for example, uh, if we ask people, are you an artist? Uh, uh, for instance, over and over again, it's almost like uh, asking you know, someone if they've robbed a bank or done something horrible. They say, oh, no, no, you know, not me. Uh, you know, my brother's an artist. Uh, you know, my aunt, you know, she likes to draw. I don't have a creative bone in my body. Uh, but then, they, you know, they don't want to sound ignorant. So, yeah, you know, I, I go to museums um, sometimes. Uh, so uh, I guess I if that's uh, your reaction, I would uh, just, you know, sort of challenge you to open your mind. And that's really what our teaching is. It's a judo trick. Uh, really, to try to uh, flip people's minds to uh, accept new things. And I, 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 I want to try a little bit of an exercise here. I, I'd like everyone in the audience, if they would for a moment, to think of a dinner plate. Okay, so I want you to think of a dinner plate. Now, can we see a quick show of hands? How many folks thought of a white dinner plate? A white dinner plate. Okay, that's a lot of hands. Okay, so from what I could see in here, the, the, the lights are in my eyes, but it seems like a lot of hands went up. Okay, now I want to try something else, okay? I want you guys to think about the last sporting event, the last concert uh, that you went to, the last time you were in an arena, okay? And I want you to think of an adjective to describe the size of that place. So you walk into a stadium, right? And the stadium is, okay, so, so think about a word. Okay, so how many folks said large? Okay, so you're from large is huge, big, enormous, gigantic. All right, so it seems like we have a very large verbal vocabulary, right? Um, but oftentimes our visual vocabulary uh, can be limited. We, t we tend to kind of reduce it uh, to one uh, prototype. And, and that's certainly something that we can expand upon. Okay, um, so now it's time for the heart of, uh, of our matter, and that's to talk a little bit about color. Okay, so on three, guys, okay, grass is? Green. Grass is green. Okay, so grass is green. Okay, so let's take a look at that if we could uh, for a moment. I don't know, uh, with St. Patrick's Day approaching, how many folks thought of that leprechaun uh, green, uh, perhaps for grass. But when we look at an actual um, sample of grass, actually, I don't know where Will Premier is. I saw him hiding around here at some point. This is his photo uh, in here. We'll s we see that there's actually very few greens. Um, so even in the springtime, when the grass is a little bit vo more vibrant than it is now, we're going to see olive tones. We'll see purples. We'll see golden colors. But we're actually not going to see too many greens. In fact, in this photograph, areas that I could swear were green, the fringes of the trees, uh, those are actually sort of a, a purplish green, a dark, dark, um, I don't know if you, it's the, far co the color on the far right. So I, don't, I, I doubt that that's the green that people thought of. Um, one thing that I frequently have to refresh with my art classes when they come in uh, is the uh, Sesame Street topic of primary colors, um, you know, and uh, from there the secondary colors, complementary colors. Uh, so hopefully this is a nice cheat sheet of the color chart for you. Uh, but in some ways the basic color wheel uh, might just do us a disservice if we kind of um, limit it um, to the conventional color wheel that we see on the left. For example, just mixing colors with white, muted colors, uh, you see that there's a, an array of possibilities. And it, and it doesn't stop there. I mean, we could mix colors over blacks, over grays, over opposite colors. Um, colors really do some phenomenal things uh, when you're using wet media. Uh, so uh, bleeding techniques like watercolor, we see all kinds of color possibilities there. Layering colors on top of each other. In fact, there's so many color mixing 
uh, opportunities, and it's just so vast that I think that's one reason uh, you might be familiar with a sort of stereotypical messy artist palette. At a certain point, it's almost more intuitive um, to uh, mix colors uh, in the manner that you see on the palette on the left intuitively. For those of you guys that were around uh, back in the 60s, uh, you might remember that the um, peach crayon uh, was initially called the flesh crayon, and then uh, Crayola, um, you know, thoughtfully responded to the fact that they had a uh, diverse audience uh, who liked to use uh, their crayons. And uh, so they made more skin tones, and they also uh, changed the flesh uh, color. It became known as peach. Uh, but there's some problems with that. If we look at the peaches off uh, to the right that were done with uh, colored pencils, so almost like a crayon in there, I mean, you, you'll see that there's quite a variety of colors. So there's really no way that that peach could be, you know, selected and, and sort of accurately describe a peach. And it, it certainly couldn't describe uh, skin uh, either. Um, one experience that I had when I walked into a muse uh, museum when I was younger, and we went and uh, were checking out some of the early Renaissance uh, work, uh, you know, a lot of it's a little bit creepy, you know, you have these gaunt uh, figures. Um, one thing that was sort of surreal about it is I remember seeing a, a green Madonna and child. And I later realized, uh, it was explained to me by a professor, that uh, it was actually the paints on the surface that were uh, peeling off. So the green was a green undertone. So there's cool undertones underneath, uh, representing the unoxidized blood underneath um, the skin. So your skin actually is green. The Mona Lisa, uh, world's most famous painting uh, in many respects, uh, but famous for a reason you might not know, uh, Leonardo da Vinci actually used 40 glazes, so 40 thin glazes that he, um, uh, many of them he actually invented uh, himself, but he painstakingly layered them on top. And that's how he gets the soft texture of uh, the skin. Uh, and it's also how he gets that um, mysterious atmosphere in, in back. So uh, certainly no singular crayon would have done there. Um, the Impressionists, uh, for example, uh, like Renoir, they were actually initially despised for making work that wasn't finished, that wasn't uh, layered uh, quite in the same way for revealing those colors underneath. Uh, but since then, you know, walk into a museum, those become, I think, uh, one of our favorite rooms, oftentimes and the most popular rooms to walk into just for the beauty of the colors that we see in there. So while we're talking about uh, skin and color, I can't help but pause and uh, point out this strange phenomenon that we have as human beings, this idea of labeling in terms of skin, especially um, an idea of, uh, for, for instance, black and white. Uh, you guys are sitting in the black box right now. If you were to use the color sampler, um, that's the tool in, 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 in Photoshop uh, that you could sample pixels and you would not see any black, for instance, uh, in this entire room. So true black almost never occurs in nature. The snow that was falling today, uh, if you were to sample that uh, with a sampler, you're not really gonna see any white in there uh, either. Um, so when we think of the term racism, uh, for those of us who haven't been on the receiving end, maybe it just seems like a word, but I wanna challenge the audience to do something for a second. And I want you to think about that term, uh, to feel that term as much as you can, and I want you to think about every single act of racism in history, every single act of uh, discrimination, humiliation, brutality, uh, bigotry, or the worst possible crimes, slavery, murder, um, crimes just too unspeakable to imagine. Just millions of tears, tremors, uh, torments, uh, just lives shattered over what? Justified by what? By this strange concept of, 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 of skin color, the strange artifi artificial construct of skin color. Um, so that, um, for, for me, has uh, hit home uh, more recently. Uh, my wife, who's in the audience uh, right now, uh, along with our adoptive son, uh, is here. And uh, he's been with us since he's uh, been a uh, baby. And one uh, interesting thing uh, is when we go to fill out uh, forms, when we're at either uh, the doctor's office uh, or we're filling out legal forms, uh, we're asked to check off an a ethnicity. And the awkward thing that we've had to explain over and over again is we don't know. And it's, it's also strange because, um, you know, it, it, it makes a little uh, sense to me. Friends, um, neighbors, uh, strangers come up. Um, they are taken by how handsome he is. And invariably, uh, they like to uh, start guessing uh, what his origin is. And it is a little interesting um, that people are so preoccupied with it. I, I do doubt, you know, if he was identified, for example, as, as Caucasian, that 
answer would be the same, like, oh, is he Slavic or Scandinavian? I just have to know, you know. Um, uh, so, uh, but, uh, but, you know, I've heard guesses, uh, you know, Central American Indian, or no, he must be from the South Pacific. Uh, maybe he's, uh, you know, maybe he's Asian. And uh, there's also a lot of uh, fascination out of the possibility he might be uh, black. Uh, we, we don't um, know. Some quadrants from a mixed family, my mixed family. Um, this is actually uh, coming from, uh, from uh, my son and I standing next to each other in the same uh, photograph. And I, I do want to back up and just say uh, my typical response, by the way, when people ask, uh, where they say, um, well, what is he? I, I typically say, well, uh, he's a toddler. Uh, now that he's started to walk, um, he was a baby before that. And then they go, oh, no, you know, wh but where is he from? And I say, Massachusetts, uh, which is true. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to be uh, flippant with that um, answer. And I don't want to, um, you know, uh, undermine a cultural heritage. Uh, but it, again, it's this sort of fascination, I think, with, with skin color that we're interested in. Um, and so that's why I wanted to put uh, my skin color up next to his skin color. We're both standing next to each other. And I sampled three areas. I sampled highlights, midtones, and darks. The purple actually represents our fingernails. Uh, we weren't wearing nail polish. That's, I sampled it several times just to, uh, uh, just to be sure of that. Um, but the darker one uh, is actually mine. You know, people use the term uh, colorblind in a positive way to mean to look beyond uh, skin color. Uh, however, I'm very aware of, 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 of color. As an artist, if you're taking a watercolor class, the trees shimmer with color. The people around you dance um, with color. And if someone ever asks, or if, if, uh, if my son ever asks, uh, what am I? Uh, the answer is so simple. You're my son. <laughs> I think that art and being a parent both share in common that they revealed a world of beauty to me that I would not have known existed otherwise. Thank you. <laughs>